And may only God's words be heard in the name of the loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Yes, yes again. Believe it or not, we are still in Celebrate, and it ends on Pentecost Sunday. It's the flames of the Spirit. Red represents the flames of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Reverend. Red on Pentecost Sunday, you're invited to do that. Pentecost actually means the 50th day, the descent of the Holy Spirit on the apostles after Jesus' ascension. And the reason we want a reader in different languages is because the scripture in their own language. And we will celebrate that. But I get ahead. The Episcopal Church is in the process of electing a new presiding bishop. And that is a, a bishop that uh, adult form afterward. But our he was the preacher. Yes. Now, think about this. Don't you think he'd be a hard act to follow? Quotes him all the time. He said, if it's not about love, it's not about God that helped um, write kind of a diocesan profile, or a bishop profile, if you will, and actually took the, the right Reverend Catherine Jeffers Scorey. She was the first female bishop to be um, in communion, um, for that matter. But when she was presented church, I'll paraphrase a little bit about what she said. She said, the Episcopal Church is a tradition that thinks your gifts are important. That you have a ministry by birch is to support each other. People, we don't always think the same thing or the same way. And that can be challenged in an adult manner now. Um, than someone who just nods their head yes to everything you say. We're a strong traditional church, even from our Jewish roots. But at the same time, it gets expressed in a wide variety of ways. You will find people to love and people who will love you and people who will challenge you. And they may be the same people. This body will challenge you to grow and develop in your relationship with God, to develop your ability to serve your neighbor, to love your neighbor and God in the process. And she was in a church when this hyper or her or they. She pointed to someone sitting in the church there. Her neighbor and God in the process. In many cases, learning from the temple, if you noticed in our first, our staff meeting this past, past week at the diocesan office, um, especially in the past, who had a specific social function about the, the eunuch that was baptized and became a believer. And before I could, <laughs> wonderful. And that's what I'm going to do. You know, but, but it will characterize the modern church, we hope. Think about this a minute. Jesus was Jewish. You know, he wasn't a Christian. The community believed that Jesus was the Messiah. Some did. A revolutionary change in the way a growing group of Jewish have been. This group began to view their covenant with God based on their own. Gentile Christians outnumbered the Jewish everyone. And so did his disciples. Love all, serve all, include. So let's, let's look at this Ethiopian a moment. Perhaps like all other Jewish people did, he was there to worship God. He's reading scripture from, if he's reading it out loud, because we're used to reading it silently. Play it when we re would read. So he's reading the scripture out loud. It's expressed not because of the color of his skin. He would have been dark skinned very important. And because of that, he would have been considered an outsider, considered an outsider because of his sexual status. So here we have to study the prophet Isaiah hospitable. What does he do? Look what happened. Let me put it in perspective for you. That's like to yourself. <laughs> Think about that. Nation from Philip of the scripture So I, but he was reading Star Trek moment in the Bible. Philip is snatched away, snatched up and transported away, and he goes on proclaiming the good news in other parts of Caesarea. And then the Ethiopian goes on rejoicing in what happens. 
Philip was so grounded in his tradition that he recognized the Holy Spirit nudging him along. God was guiding him along the way. And what if, what if we were to s- surrender our travel plans to the world time where you thought, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do. Perhaps that was the Holy Spirit giving you a little Christ as our Lord and Savior. What if we shared that with others? And uh, statistically, the Spirit resides here paid in this, to do divine work. Where have you encountered a divine appointment in your life? I believe it happens all the time. We have to be awake and aware and tuned into God to realize that is what's happening. That is where the Holy Spirit has pushed us. Think about that, where the Holy Spirit has pushed you in a direction that you might not have taken otherwise. Philip wouldn't have taken that direction unless he'd been pushed by the Holy Spirit. These three. And our role is to support each of them. In our, that's, that's hard for us. We're not taught to do that in our society. It's easier just to ignore someone, to not even acknowledge their existence. Now, if I was a Pentecostal preacher, I'd say, that's where the devil's moving in on you. Don't let that happen. But it's a good thing I'm an Episcopalian and I'm not going to do that. No one is for the Holy Spirit. Ministry by out 